Live from WTVO 17 and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. After more than a week of warning, the state line is set to step backwards in its fight against COVID-19. New restrictions go into place this weekend and, will, and what it will take to get back on the track to recovery. A Rockford neighborhood battles to bring crime under control. A local leader shares some ideas that haven't worked as they work towards a solution. And it's nearly time for President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden to go one on one. We have tips to make sure you get the most out of the showdown. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. The state of Illinois steps in after the state line sees its rolling positivity rate for COVID-19 climb for the eighth day in a row. Governor Pritzker and the Illinois Department of Public Health announced new restrictions this afternoon. Starting Saturday, no indoor dining at restaurants will be allowed and all diners must eat outside with tables six feet apart. No indoor service will be allowed at bars and outside bar service closes at 11. All social gatherings must be kept to 25 or fewer or 25% of capacity. Right now, Region 1's positivity rate sits at 8.3%. That's the highest in the state. The Illinois Department of Health will be tracking the numbers. If the region dips below 6.5% for three days straight, the restrictions will be relaxed. But if it stays above 8% for more than 14 days, stricter guidelines could be put in place. There are nine counties within Region 1. Only four of them exceed the 8% positivity rate threshold. The state reports Boone County has the highest rate with 10.2%. Lee is next with 9.4%. Winnebago at 9.3%. And Joe Davis rounds it off at 8%. You can find a full list of new restrictions at mystateline.com. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker will be in COVID quarantine for the next two weeks. The news comes after a member of his staff tested positive for the virus Monday. Tests for Pritzker and other administration staff came back clear. The staffer traveled with Pritzker throughout the state last week. Pritzker's office says masks were worn during all of their interactions. The governor will be isolated for 14 days. New media briefings will be done remotely. A once quiet and family-friendly neighborhood in Rockford is changing. Over the last few years, the Rolling Green neighborhood near Alpine and Broadway has started to see more violent crime. Just last night, there was a shooting near Louisiana Road and East Moreland Avenue. A car was hit by gunfire, but no one was hurt. Today, our Dylan Sorocki spoke with a woman who represents the area as the city works to bring crime under control. Hoffman is fed up with the recent uptick in crime in the Rolling Green neighborhood. She's determined to find new ways to make these streets a little safer. Hoffman says vehicle to vehicle shootings have become more common in part because drivers use neighborhood streets to avoid higher traffic areas. Initially, neighborhood leaders thought installing speed bumps or traffic circles could help. But after meeting with traffic experts, they realized those could end up making things worse. People that are engaged in a gun battle aren't going to slow down for the speed bumps and instead it could actually cause more problems because as they're shooting they could uh, lose their target and shoot a neighbor instead so we didn't like that option we looked at traffic circles same problem coming up at six find out the next steps the neighborhood association is taking as they work to slow down crime in rockford for your home team i'm dylan Siraki. Illinois House Republicans accuse House Speaker Michael Madigan of bribery and corruption, and they call on the House to discipline or even expel him. Eyewitness News is keeping you connected to the Capitol. ComEd's top compliance officer, David Glockner, testified today. He's already acknowledged ComEd paid $1.3 million in bribes intended to influence Speaker Madigan and admitted ComEd's former CEO gave up a seat on the company's board to one of Madigan's close friends without putting that board seat up for applications. The individuals at ComEd paid in order to influence or reward Michael Madigan include one of Madigan's top three precinct captains, a former ward committeeman, an alderman, and many others in what was described as part of an old-fashioned patronage system. House Republicans want to call Madigan's confidant Mike McClain, but at least one Democrat would need to sign off on a subpoena. ComEd's former Vice President Fidel Marquez also entered a guilty plea in federal court today. In about three hours, the men running to be President of the United States go head-to-head -head on the debate stage. It's a chance for the candidates to draw in new voters in what's most likely going to be a tight election. Michelle Rave spoke with a local debate coach who shared some ideas on how viewers can take in tonight's action.
The first presidential debate is a crucial moment for many people who have yet to decide who they'll be voting for. Matt Dupuis is NIU's debate team coach. He says tonight's debate will offer the American public unfiltered access to the candidates, defending their policies unscripted. Some of those topics expected is the Supreme Court nominee, COVID responses, the economy, and race relations. Dupuis recommends people to fact check what the candidates say in real time and encourages voters to take part in virtual watching parties to engage in discussions with people with different viewpoints. Watching it by yourself is just confirmation bias. You're going to cherry pick the things that you agree with and disregard the things that you don't. Um, if you're not being challenged or at least being confronted with the topics that are there, it's super easy to fit all that information into our existing information framework. Coming up at 6, we'll hear from students from Rockford Lutheran School, many of whom will be voting in their first presidential election, about what they're listening for tonight. Reporting in Rockford for your home team, I'm Michelle Rave. And don't forget, you can watch tonight's debate live right here on WTVO. Coverage starts at 7, the debate starts at 8. If you're a City of Rockford voter and haven't gotten your vote by mail ballot yet, you're not alone. According to the Board of Elections, those ballots started hitting mailboxes last week. A record number of requests is causing a delay. The city has more than 17,000 ballots to distribute. Not all have been mailed yet. Rockford's Board of Elections warns if you requested a ballot in the past few weeks, you could be waiting a little bit longer than people who applied sooner. In Winnebago County, more than 20,000 vote by mail requests have been made. County Clerk Lori Gummow says those should show up at homes sometime this week. The clerk's office has been working to make sure those ballots get out in a timely fashion. But Gummow points out voters play a role too. We've been talking to our local postmasters for them to ensure that the ballots will be delivered on time. But if you receive a ballot, don't delay. Make sure that you cast your vote and drop it in the mail or put it in our drop box right away. You have up until Election Day to register, but the deadline to sign up online is October 18th. We may soon learn what evidence was presented to grand jurors in the Breonna Taylor case. This after a judge orders audio recordings be added to the court's case file. Kentucky's attorney general says he never asked the grand jury to consider homicide charges against the officers involved in Taylor's shooting death. Only wanton endangerment charges were requested. Two officers were cleared. Former Louisville police detective Brett Hankinson was charged for firing into a neighboring apartment. He pled not guilty Monday. President Trump's pick for the Supreme Court meets with senators on Capitol Hill. Judge Amy Coney Barrett made the rounds this morning and afternoon. Republicans are moving quickly to get Barrett seated on the bench. Confirmation hearings are planned for October 12th. The president says he hopes to have Barrett on the Supreme Court by Election Day. Democrats and some Republicans are criticizing Barrett's nomination. They say the winner of the presidential election should be the one to nominate the next Supreme Court justice. Now, your first warm weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, you know, it felt a little bit more, again, like fall out there. And of course, we've got to share your fall photos. So a big thank you to Monica Hendricks for sharing this picture. This out of Dixon. Uh, last week, as the sun was setting, when we had all the haze out there, no hazy skies, but we've had quite a bit of cloud cover here these last couple of days. And today, no exception. You wondering about when maybe we start to see some of those peak fall colors? Well, usually for northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. It occurs mid-October, so we've got another couple weeks, a little bit earlier, further up to the north, and a little bit later during the month of October, the further south you get. Really starting to see those colors change and become a little bit more vibrant here over the last couple of days. Of course, temperatures, how cold or warm it is, how dry we are, how wet we are, all of that plays a big factor. We do have some rain coming through. It's light showers, but starting to see a little bit of this begin to pop up here, now moving in from the northwest, working through uh, Rydot and German Valley, Forreston, getting in towards the uh, Leaf River area, and then just south of Rockford. So we'll see a couple of light showers and a sprinkle or two here as we go through the rest of this evening, or I should say for at least the next hour or two. Our skies are actually going to turn partly cloudy once we head into the overnight, and this will allow our temperatures to fall back into the lower 40s. Now we've got kind of this wave train of low pressure systems coming through. First one coming in now. Next one setting up over Canada. This one is 
actually going to dive closer to us for the start of tomorrow morning. So this will bring us a chance for some showers as we head towards the morning hours tomorrow and then into the afternoon. But you see for the rest of this evening, skies starting to clear out a little bit with some of that cloud cover. It will be a chilly night tonight. A few spots could even fall into the upper 30s to start off our Wednesday. But as quickly as we clear out, we'll see that cloud cover build back in. Here comes that disturbance. You see the rain showers moving through. It's not going to be a lot, but we actually get another cold front that comes in tomorrow afternoon. And this again will bring a few scattered showers as we get head into the afternoon and then into the evening. Second and stronger cold front then comes in on Thursday. This is a better opportunity for us to get more widespread rainfall during our Thursday afternoon. In fact, some of that rain could actually be a little bit more on the heavy side, just given the strength of that cold front and how much cold air we have coming in up above. The combination of those two with some of the showers that come down Thursday afternoon, we could actually get a little bit of grapple with them. Think of that as kind of some soft hail, not ice pellets, not sleet, or not actually hail, but some kind of more frozen raindrops coming down for the afternoon on Thursday. Getting out into the fields these next couple of days, tomorrow and Thursday will be the days you have to watch as temperatures stay in the 50s and the 60s. And the 50s is where we're at right now, 57 degrees in Freeport, 57 degrees I should say in Rockford and 55 degrees in Freeport. My graphics, they don't want to move, so you're just going to have to stick around, guys, till the end uh, of the show for that seven-day forecast. Or maybe not, because it is going to get a little bit colder. Let you know how cold it gets a little later. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with Sports Director Scott Lepper. Well, the White Sox punched out 96 home runs during the regular season, and that penchant for long balls isn't likely to change now in the playoffs. It didn't today in their first wild card game in Oakland against the A's. In the top of the second, Adam Engel started things off with this solo blast. Then we go to the top of the third inning. Jose Abreu, believe it or not, making his playoff debut, he launches one out. And there was one more blast to come in the eighth inning, this time off the bat of Yasmani Grandal. Combine these three homers with seven great innings of work by Lucas Giolito, and it adds up to a 4-1 to White Sox win. The Cubs take the field for their first playoff game tomorrow afternoon. They'll send Kyle Hendricks up against the Marlins. Hendricks knows David Ross could have gone with Hugh Darvish in this first game. It's, it's a huge honor for me uh, to get the nod from Rossi for game one. But at the end of the day, uh, we all know what Hugh's done this year. He's our ace. He's the guy. He's been dominant all year long. So really, if this was a one-game playoff kind of thing, he would be the guy, obviously. Uh, his, what he's been through in his career and, and the stages he's been on and, and the way he's performed, I think it's really easy. It's very comforting from my seat uh, when he takes the ball at, on any stage and at any point during the season. So... Um, I know he's excited. The game will start at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. You can see it here on WTBO 17. All right, here's that 7 day forecast 63 for tomorrow afternoon. Showers 50 degrees on Thursday, low 50s on Friday. Looking chilly. Thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending a little time with us. Stay safe.